Welcome to What a Week, the podcast where we discuss the news that you should have gotten over the previous seven days. I'm James Messer, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Judy Messer. Hello. Hi, everybody. It is so nice to have you here. It's so nice to have me here. It's been uh, quite a week, has it not? It's uh, yes, I've been especially for you. Especially for me. I've been uh, out of town. I've been away on a seventh grade field trip to our nation's capital here in the United States, to Washington, D.C., and uh, we had about 70 or 80 kids in D.C. Uh, and four kids to a chaperone, and we saw everything. My hat is off to you. We saw everything from <laughs> 7.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Every day for four days, we saw the city. Uh, there's very few things we did not see. So every possible thing <laughs> that you can think of seeing, we managed to see. And it was actually quite a nice quite a nice uh, trip. It's a great city. I learned things. I've been there a number of times. I still saw things I'd never seen before and learned things I never knew about some of the things that are in the Washington, D.C. as a city. So if you're thinking of going to D.C., what an, what an excellent trip, and especially in an educational trip. And the kids are there, and they get to see the Constitution, and they get to see the Declaration of Independence and yeah, the War Memorials. you're seeing it through different eyes, aren't you? Very different eyes. It's a different perspective. And kind of think back to how, how I used to do things back when I was a kid. And uh, we're also lucky we had a, a bunch of great kids. But but while we were there, we just saw so such interesting things, too. And one of the things during this week, we normally don't bring up on this podcast things that are in the normal mainstream news, as you, some of you are probably aware. Uh, but this week, I was in the House chambers. I was upstairs in the gallery uh, when Gabby Giffords retired, did her retirement speech. That's amazing. And her final vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. So every representative was there. Uh, it was just a, a quirk of timing that we happened to be walking in at that particular time, which in itself was was remarkable. Uh, and and it was it was one of those moments that you just don't get. Mm -hmm. It's so rare. Uh, everybody in the house is standing and, and, and applauding. Everybody in the gallery is standing and applauding. Normally, the gallery completely silent. They tell you don't say anything. But of course, it was an extremely emotional moment. Uh, and I'm so glad that the kids got to see that. I'm so glad that this mm -hmm. group of of kids were, that that they're learning about the country and learning about how how it all works. And they didn't they didn't quite understand exactly right. what they were seeing. But but I sort of told them this is really really an important moment well, you need to and remember. And what they're learning is it's it's words on a page, you know. Right. There's it seems almost very impersonal, but then when you see something like that, it. It brings it to a whole new level. You know, people are, these are real people, real lives up there trying to do their job, which is the work of the country. Right. And what this poor lady has been through is just unbelievable. And I think that was great that they got to see a very human side of of politics, of the government. It was a, a bad situation that... Uh, if anything good can come out of it, there mm -hmm. she is. She's alive. She's on the floor. She's walking. She's talking, uh, uh, meeting with her friends and that type of thing. So it was uh, it was nice to see. It was one of those times where you just lucked into it, and there you are in the moment. And they'll remember that even if they don't fully understand, you know, everything that went on. That's something they're always going to remember. That's right. And and I think that's going to be extremely valuable for them going forward. And we had a few moments like that. We had we had a couple where we were in the Smithsonian, and they had a rock there that was a piece of the Berlin Wall. And of mm -hmm. course, seventh graders knew nothing of the Berlin Wall. They probably right. they don't remember all that with the wall coming that. down. Right. They didn't study that. They don't know anything about that. But I was able to. Uh, I lined them up. Say, okay, touch this. You had because they had a piece of it out that you could touch. Like you must come here and touch this. You have no idea what this is, but you will someday, mm -hmm. and you will have touched this. Be so glad you did. This is so glad that you did. So, but of course, on what a week. We, we don't deal with those stories and those crazy things that you might see. So, of course, I have uh, things to show you this week that are a little bit outside the realm of what is normal. And, of course, I brought some of those back from Washington, D.C. So, <laughs> so I wanted to share one of these with you before we jumped into, into too much of this. If you go out to – let me get, get a picture of this – 360.io. Uh, slash FP7 capital F4 – capital L. I know it's a weird 
piece, but this is from a company called Occipital. And what this is, is a 360 I, on my iPhone. I just did some 360 views, and you can see I'm here. I, I do have better 360 views of monuments and of <laughs> I was gonna say. cathedrals and of, of other things. <laughs> a but, little t-shirt store? Well, you know, this is what a week. I don't do anything normal. But this is a 360 <laughs> of one of these tchotchke stores that's outside of the Ford's Theater, where, of course, President Lincoln was shot. And, and it's this big row of a bunch of them. And I started looking around and found that there is some awful, miserable, <laughs> horrible-looking tchotchkes in some of these places. Really? I thought a shop like that would be full of high-class souvenirs. You would think that. <laughs> However, I happened to run across some that even surprised me. So I thought this oh, would, I can't wait to see this. This would be perfect to bring back <laughs> to my friends on What a Week. So so let's look at one of these. Let's start with this, this obsession <laughs> of the first dog. For those of you outside of the United States, uh, President Obama has a dog. His name is Bo. And as you can see by these uh, magnets that are supposed to, I guess, go on your refrigerator, <laughs> this is Bo Obama, the first dog of the United States of America. Undoubtedly, this was made in China. I probably should have checked that prior prior to doing that. Here's another one, which I thought was nice. He's very cute. He's a very cute little dog. He's adorable little dog, isn't he? There he is. <laughs> I'm not sure why I want a, a magnet of Bo, but nonetheless, there it is. Now, of course, these that's okay. That's not bad. A dog, his first dog. Sure, we can we can make fun of that. I, I did notice in the back there was this this tall area here, uh, uh just t-shirts and stuff. But if you see at the bottom, right here at the bottom, can you kind of see that box? Down here on the bottom that's sitting on top of a speaker that's playing a really scratchy local radio station. <laughs> do, do you see that box that's there? Let's let's zoom up on that box. It is a whole box full of McCain for President 2008. For sale? For sale. <laughs> for sale. So if you ever wondered, okay. where, what do they do with all the buttons and the stickers and all of those things from an election? They're in a box in the back. And the floor. I mean, you never know. Somebody could just want to go back in time or have a retro party from 2008. Somebody might buy it. Sure. Why not? <laughs> so I saw that. Again, that's not too far out of the scope of possibilities. It, it was interesting <laughs> to see it there. Nonetheless, uh, here's a here's some type of odd statuish thing. I thought this one was unique that it had a clock because you need that. And on top of the clock is an eagle that I'm not sure is it's it's hugging the clock or that if is it's just in, beautiful. Is it in a nosedive that's heading down? I'm not too sure. Very very odd to see that there. Um, a keychain. Wow. Of, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Abraham Lincoln is like really. I told you you. Would Although be, it has you know it kind of has a quirky little, you know, homemade look to it. Boy, doesn't it? It. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of those are flying off the shelves, but there you go. Uh, this is a tie uh, that says the first family. Where's the dog? Uh, again, what happened to Bo? I don't know where Bo is. He's he's not on he's not on the list. Poor Bo, he didn't make it. <laughs> that is a sad. Tie. That's a sad little tie. And and it looks like my camera has washed out the picture. It has not. That's wow. how it looks. <laughs> You're looking at the tie. What's really sad is that's the kind of tie you look at and think, oh, I should get that. Because at some point at the office this year, they're going to have the ugly tie day. <laughs> oh, or, or the blurry tie day. <laughs> blurry tie day. This is not a blurry picture. That's My exactly kids can wear it, it to school for clash day. And, and one of the last things I found was one that was just so interesting. What is that? This is, this is Lincoln uh, uh, right here. And this is the Washington Monument, but it was so that looks nothing like the Lincoln Memorial. Is is his arm like he's sort of leaning? He's sort of hanging. He's hanging up. like he's going to have a sandwich or it's something. Lincoln, <laughs> I'm hanging yo. The the Lincoln that was on here though, it looks so interesting though. I kind of liked it a little bit. This one I liked. He's an abstract he is, sort of Lincoln. A, that's what it is. Very abstract. This and one what back is here. The, is that a flower growing? There's those are your cherry blossoms, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there. Then wait, wait, lastly, wait. can we go back one second? To okay. That? The, what is the building next to Lincoln? That's the Washington Memorial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a so, little piece of everything. And and it's on top of all of that, it's a piggy bank. So there you go. It's pretty interesting. I'm not sure what that says, but I I don't think it says anything good. 
And sitting next next to it is a uh, ceramic thing. Uh, this was the one for United States. There's the Democrats <laughs> that are represented by the donkeys. There were also, of course, the Republican elephants sitting right next to this in the same format that has, for some reason, a picture of the White House on the side of it in okay. Washington, D.C. So somebody buys these and they have to wrap them up and take them on the plane back to wherever they're going. And best of luck to that them. That is sad. Like, that's... That's the souvenir. That's the representation of our capital. It is, city. and that, and and that is, uh, that was my week. So and you didn't bring me anything. I didn't bring. <laughs> and now you know I why. I can't imagine why. You, now you understand exactly. <laughs> Those are some why that cheesy is. tchotchkes. Those are very cheesy tchotchkes. So this is. Um, uh, we did, of course, see all of the very. Um, interesting things in the city. We got to take a tour of the White House. We got to tour the Capitol building. Which is hard to do. It's hard to do. The Library of Congress, the uh, Supreme Court building. We got to sit in a lecture in the Supreme Court courtroom. We we did amazing things during that week. That's incredible. So don't don't take my little tchotchkes here as being representation of the entire week. It was actually (laughs) it's actually quite a nice week. Okay, off to our first story of the week. I have uh what a meow. What a meow it is. And what what good is being on the internet? I feel a cat video coming If on. you can't do a cat story. <laughs> There's no cat video here, but absolutely a cat story. And this is from the uh from the star. Here's a slash news slash article eleven twenty one one six seven. And this is uh this is a story, this is a travel story about a kitty cat. Let's flip over to to see the kitty cat here. Here's my Toronto news story here. This is a cat that was brought on a plane. This was a 5.45 in the morning flight. Oh my gosh. This is Ripples. <laughs> Ripples is the cat's name? Ripples is the cat's name. There is a 5.40 a.m. flight. Everybody's getting on the flight. And for some reason, the person who was carrying their cat on the flight, because you can shove the cat in its carrier underneath the seat. That's certainly small oh, enough to fit Oh, you can actually take them Exactly. Inside. You okay. can fit them on the plane and, and put them right under the seat right in front of you. And that's what they did. And, but for some reason at 540 in the morning, they felt it necessary to let Ripples out <laughs> of his container or her container. I don't know. It was Ripples, a guy or a girl. It's hard to tell. Perhaps we'll, we'll see. That in is the, never a good idea, by the way. In the story. The cat freaked out. Well, duh. Made a beeline. <laughs> Or at that point, the open cockpit, because the plane had not left yet. Oh, no. And disappeared. The cat was gone. (laughs) The cat was missing (laughs) at 540. Actually, this had to be before 540 because they had not left yet. Ripples has gone AWOL at 5 freaking 45. (laughs) Ripples is out of here. Good day to you, sir. (laughs) They looked everywhere the owner's calling ripples ripples come out did she like shake some darling some peanuts to trick him like it was a cat treat ripples was having none of that ripples was like "Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no every time i get in that carrier there's a shot involved i'm not doing it not mm -mm. so (laughs) they ended up bringing maintenance in to take off panels inside of the plane to find and they're there's ripples hiding up in there like like a plane engine poor hiding up in there so um, so they grabbed the cat, shoved it back in the carrier, and the plane left at 10 o'clock. There was no damage, nothing. They checked everything, did their diagnostics in the cockpit, and Ripples finally made it. This, by the way, Ripples was was heading uh, to uh, from Halifax on Air Canada, and there, there of course, is, is poor Ripples. Look at him. He looks petrified. I would not be happy. He's you know, having a bad day. I'm not happy about flying. All right. <laughs> Don't like it at all. So <laughs> solidarity, my ripples. I'm, I'm with you on that one. I don't know why she decided to open it, though, because I have been in the waiting room at the vet. Yeah. And dogs are a little different at the vet. They're very quiet. They hide. Or sometimes they're oblivious. They're just wagging very and social. happy to write, mm-hmm. hey, this is awesome. Look at this place. Yeah. Cats, no. Nope. And you can tell the, the person will come in with the cat carrier and the cat's making very bad noises. <laughs> Kissing, growling, <laughs> nothing good is coming from the cat carrier. Why would you open that? Why? On a plane. Why? <laughs> and if I was on a flight that left at 540, right. that means I had to be up hour and a half, some people right. two hours You've had before no this coffee, flight. probably. Nothing. And you're at the airport at that hour. I'm already not happy. Right. <laughs> and now I'm delayed until 10. I could have slept until 8. 
And then instead of three in the morning, that's that's a little bit of a different thing. <laughs> so they made it. Ripples is hopefully at his final destination there. And <laughs> hopefully everything is just fine with, with good old Ripples. So Poor cat. It's sort of started off the week pretty well. Our, our next story. What a cyber attack. I don't know if you saw this story this week. We were attacked here in the United States. Did you happen to see this? I missed the story. Oh, you should. Let's let's look at this one because this one, pretty interesting. This one comes from this story on nextgov.com. Let me flip this around so people can see it. It's this nextgov.ng and all of these things associated with it. Just search for hackers manipulated railway computers, according to the TSA. This is a story that came out this week, but apparently is something that occurred in December. Now, this is this but is. But we're a big just deal. now hearing about it. We're we're just hearing about it because the memo that talked about this just got out to the media. So this mm-hmm. was this was something that nobody had seen. Now the memo itself apparently was marked not for any top secret or any particular clearance. So it's not illegal that the memo got out. Okay. But it got out nonetheless. Now what's what's interesting about this story, of course, is is uh, the damage that this can do. This is pretty serious. Mm -hmm. Someone from somewhere else is finding these types of things going on. That's not good. You don't want anybody having access to anything associated with what's happening on the railways. Now, Now, according to this story, of course, there's a lot going on. Hackers, possibly from abroad, executed an attack on a Northwest Rail Company. Now, they didn't put a lot of details into this, probably because the memo itself didn't have a lot of details. But it, this happened on December the 1st, where an unnamed railway, railroad was slowed for a short while, rail schedules delayed 15 minutes, and it happened again the next day. There's a lot going on mm-hmm. here in this story. There's there's badness here. And of course, um, fortunately, we can, we can count on our, our media to keep us informed of this. Web Pro News, of course, says hackers take control of U.S. Railway. TechEye.net says hackers hijack U.S. trains. Clearly pretty serious. And eWeek says the SCADA systems in railways, which is the underlying uh, uh, method that they use to control all of these very diverse systems okay. that they have, is vulnerable to attack. Now, if you recall... There was a story we did not too long ago about hackers attacking things. And, mm-hmm. of course, here we've talked about this particular situation. The trains were slowed for a short while, delayed schedules for 15 minutes or so. There were three Internet protocol IP addresses that were associated from from apparently outside the United States. Again, this worry about the bad guys coming along. And the memo said the conclusion that rail was a feck effect by a cyber attack is very serious. Okay, granted, the TSA didn't do a lot of of work on editing the memo before it went out, <laughs> but uh, clearly cyber attack. I love that term, cyber attack. We're under cyber attack. It's very bad. Now, as, as for those of you that have watched What a Week in the past, you know that sometimes these stories don't actually turn out to be exactly the way you might think <laughs> That they go. <laughs> I think the, there's a little more here. I think there, there might be a little bit more to this story. And of course there is, because two days later, the Railroad Association comes out and says, that what are you talking about, TSA? There was no attack. Nobody touched a train. No trains were hijacked. There were no yeah, trains. Yeah, that's a strong word to use. That's a pretty strong word to use on on hijacking that piece of it. It's it's remarkable that they even use that term in there. What finally ended up happening was the Department of Homeland Security said, after further review, as if it was some type of football game, we've looked at the films. <laughs> the analysis. We've had the referees go down on the field and examine the last play. Mm, no, there was no... Mm, no, no attack. Somebody attacking trains and fearing that this reminds me. Do you remember Ali G? Remember the Ali G show? I do. He had uh, on one episode a deputy director of, I believe it was the CIA, Robert Kerr, on and and was asking him, what if somebody hijacks a train? What if the terrorists hijack a train? They could run it right into the White House. So, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, and, and the direct deputy director was like, 
Well, no, of course not. There's no tracks going the rice. They could lay tracks and the train could go right <laughs> in the White House. The Association of American Railroad says there was no targeted computer-based attack. And off the record, somebody at the TSA said, well, there was a meeting we had, and the person who wrote the memo was in the meeting, but they thought that we said it was a targeted attack, but in fact, it wasn't targeted. And, and there's there's plenty of speculation about this, but much of the speculation on the internet says the machine, it could be something like the machines that were responsible for giving out tickets got a virus. You know, those types of things. So it wasn't a deliberate hack. It was not a deliberate hack, train. not a deliberate attack. No trains were hijacked. <laughs> No trains were harmed. Runaway this train. Viral attack. Right? <laughs> Help us. The train. It won't stop. These systems are highly wow. secure, unbelievably secure in in their operation. There's a lot of moving parts. And of course, we have to be diligent about but the news. Here's one piece. One piece. And then you have a whole different story, which is scary. What in the world you know? are they talking about? So again, whenever I see one of these stories that talks about the hijacking, and whenever anybody used the term cyber anything, read the story and try to figure out if that makes any sense. I have a theory. I think I know what happened. Oh, okay. Tell me what happened. I think Ripples has a brother. Oh. And I think he was on that train. It was Toonses. <laughs> Toonses was, was Toonses. driving. <laughs> and Toonses took over the train. I think that might I be I think valid. there was a cat running amok on that train. Well, no wonder they didn't want this to get out. This is very, very serious. So, Cats so. are rising up. They're sick of being in dumb videos. It was remarkable <laughs> just how bad that, that story was, just how off the off the case. Now, if you recall, in the original, we did the, a story of this about two months ago on What a Week, where the Russians were attacking our water treatment yes. plants. Which from That'll the really get people stirred up, by the way. Do you remember who said that? Who, who said that about the water treatment plants being attacked? No. It was the TSA. Do you remember? Really? Do you remember who came back and said, no, it was not? It's Homeland Security. It's the same story. We're doing the same stories over and over again and the same situation again. So it's it's quite remarkable. You know, when you're talking about a hack, cyber attack, I mean, you really need to get that story straight before you put it out there. The final little tidbit I'll leave you on this story is that the memo itself was written in a way that was uh, taking the entire situation that occurred and was giving people kudos inside of the TSA. These people that found the attack did a great job. Here's their name. They get a gold star for the week. They get to park in the employee parking place, the employee of the month parking place. It was them touting how well they did on identifying this threat and informing all of the train manufacturer, the train uh, transportation companies that this happened. So, oh boy. So, oh boy. So uh, that was that was quite an interesting series. To show our appreciation, we have an Abraham Lincoln piggy bank for you. <laughs> I like the keychain. <laughs> My favorite one. Our next story this week, what a test. Now, this one, it, it was one I found interesting because it, I have I learned certain things about medicine. I know nothing about medicine. I'm, I'm completely oblivious when it comes to medicine, but that's why I have you because you are uh, very knowledgeable in what happens in medicine, being a licensed registered nurse. This is great. Whenever I have the sniffles, whenever I have a problem, I don't even have to go anywhere to get my I will first help opinion. You out. That's, and when that's my always computer good. doesn't turn on or <laughs> last night I couldn't figure out how to work the Roku, so you now, are there to help me. Right there. <laughs> Yin and yang. We got it covered. This week, the story that came out, that's a, a researcher said... And as much as I love the researchers, if you want to watch last week's episode, you'll know why. The researcher said that whole breast cancer screening that we have said for years and years and years is so incredibly important. Actually, not important. Actually harms people more than it helps people. This is a very controversial subject. Blew my mind. So I, I, I don't understand why now someone's coming out and saying this is a bad thing. Do, do you have any idea... Well, and again, what this is very controversial because some people feel like in spite of all the mammograms that were being done, that are being done, yes, the rates aren't going down. No, they aren't. And you're exposing people to radiation possibly needlessly or people are getting diagnosed as having cancer and having to undergo procedures when in fact they don't have cancer. Or in some cases, it gets missed. So 
they're talking though about a very general, that's a very general statement, but there are people who, because of their family history, their genetics, they're at high risk, you know? So you're talking about, I think something that's very individualized and this is where you need to have a great doctor that you trust that you can talk to about this. Like, is this something I should really be doing? Is this something I shouldn't be doing? Um, I think these are, it's always good to raise questions like that because there's new technology coming out. They're really starting to look at something called thermography, which actually, um, it, it, it looks at your body and makes an image based on temperature. Hmm. And so very often when you're, when you're going to have cancer, when you have a tumor, there's an increased blood supply. And that shows up as a hotter area on this test. And the test is not perfect. It's something that is in development, but there's no radiation involved. And, it, and it's not a, a painful procedure like some people find with a mammogram. Because that, that seemed to be what the study was focusing on was that, yes, we do find breast cancer when doing these mammograms. Unfortunately, we're subjecting people to so much radiation right. that they're ending up having medical problems because, because of, that. of the screening process. And if you start at 40 and you're doing this every year, right? you know, that's the question is, is that really right for everybody when you don't have a family history, when you don't have a genetic predisposition? And I, I think it puts a good focus also on prevention, you know, looking at vitamin D levels, which is associated with cancer when your vitamin D levels are not appropriate, taking your certain supplements like omega-3, which is linked to um, protecting your DNA, supposedly as a preventative to cancer. Right. And also iron levels. Um, if, you're, if you don't need to be on iron and you're taking iron, especially if you're post-menopause, it actually puts you at a high risk for cancer. It's something, it's a simple blood test wow. called a ferritin test that your doctor can do. If your iron level is too high, you can stop your supplement and your doctor can order you to go donate some blood, which will help get the level down. So there's, there's a lot of factors involved there, but it, it, this is why you need to have a conversation with your physician. I don't think it's a good idea to read one thing on the internet and start making these huge decisions about your health care. As you need- we say on this podcast, never believe anything in a right. story that's on the internet. We've already seen the train is not hijacked. They are not coming to get us. And the thing that threw me about this story is that it, the, the, uh, the, uh, the publication is called Mammography Screening, Truth, Lies, and Controversy. <laughs> right. So already I know there's a slant. Mm-hmm. But of course, there's so many shades of gray and things to consider associated with this that you can't just take one thing and go with it. You know what I find is interesting? My background is in cardiology, which is, by the way, still the number one killer of women. Hmm. Heart disease is higher than cancer. Number one killer. And yet you don't hear a lot in the media about what routine screenings need to be done. Very little. You know, I mean, we talk about cholesterol. We talk about watching your blood pressure. But why isn't there a routine screening for women, you know, done at a certain age? I, I don't know, but you don't hear as much about that. You hardly hear about that. Seems like breast cancer being uh, the pink ribbons and everything mm-hmm. else associated with that is what the big, the big marketing push mm-hmm. is about, and all which the is great. I mean, it's board. it's definitely brought up awareness. Right. It's, I love when there's a dialogue that opens up between a woman and her healthcare provider. That is a fantastic thing. You need to be involved in your own health. You need to ask the questions. You've got to be a partner in that process. But I would like to see more out there about heart disease and stroke because the the prevalence is much higher. So this particular story had very strong words in here about, I can't justify women going to get a mammogram. And and that seemed a bit strong Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I I don't think when there are people who can give you an absolute personal story about themselves or someone they know personally who had something detected by a man, you know, by a mammogram. And you're talking about someone's life being saved, a mom, a sister, a wife, you know, that's powerful. And one of the things that uh, that I always think about when I'm reading these particular articles on the Internet is that. 
this is a perfect opportunity to start that dialogue mm-hmm. with the healthcare professional. Go see your doctor, have the conversation. Right. Figure out, do we do it once every two years? Do we do we do different kinds of methods? Mm-hmm. Do I now uh, go to my go to Google and create a Google alert for these different forms mm-hmm. and different vitamins and different things we need to know about to learn more about those things? It's very easy. Right. Or what about genetic screening? Perfect example. Yeah. And all of these things are going to, in five years, this will all be very different. By the way, I get excited to see this kind of evolution going on in healthcare. I think it's great to ask these questions. It's good to be developing new methods. I think it's vital. I think that's how we discover wonderful new ways of testing. And if you can make a test more accessible, if you can make it more comfortable, if you can make it cheaper, mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. are going to do it. Exactly. And, and why wouldn't you? Right. So, so go talk to your doctor, figure out what's right for you. Do not just turn everything off and never get another mammogram because we need to make sure we're doing the right thing for everybody when we're looking at those particular things. I thought that was a great story this week. Our next story, if we want to jump over to this, is what a flight. Now, we're not talking about ripples. This is a different flight. I thought this was going to be about cheese. Not another cat story, not a a cheese story. (laughs) We've had cheese in every show. Remarkably, I did not fit a cheese story in this week. I'm so sad to say. So this one, though, was just cool because this takes me back to my childhood. Let me, this is from, again, Canada, another Canadian story this week. Canada. The, the, the can- Canadian in the room is pretty happy about that piece <laughs> of it. Um, this is a story about a couple of teenagers that wanted to take a balloon, a, a weather balloon, and send it into space. I love it. So they did. They sat down at the, these are us two 17 year old grade 12 students in Canada. This is Assad Muhammad. This is Matthew Ho. They sat down and said, you know, we saw this MIT in Massachusetts in the United States took a weather balloon and they attached some cameras to it and they, they just let it go. And it went up into space. It went above the atmosphere or at least high enough in the atmosphere that now you see the blackness of space really high up there. And they got great pictures. Incredible. Yeah. And these guys said, let's do the same thing. (laughs) We can get a balloon. They can buy those off the internet. And they they put together a whole plan. They laid it out. For them, it was something that they they really started looking at. I'm going to flip down in the story so we can read a little more about this. They put got four cameras, figure out which cameras make sense. They got some that would take pictures every X number of seconds. So it would be able to capture everything that's there. They got this really light styrofoam. They dug it out so it would protect the cameras. They put, wow. it, put it all together. I like how he puts a note, though. We had no experience at all using sewing machines. And as you can see, the stitches are not really good. <laughs> <laughs> they said, they, said they, they broke four sewing needles on their mom's sewing machine. That I'm they with you. Not a baker, not a seamstress. <laughs> I'm with you. <ya. laughs> so, but they got it together. They did it. I would have never been able to do that as a senior in high school, but they, they ended up doing it. And then they, they took a Lego man and stuck him to the, the outside of it. They super glued a Lego man. Absolutely. With the Canadian flag. With the Canadian flag. <laughs> the, and, and there it goes into space. And that is one of those things that, that just remarkable. Uh, let's see if the, the video will play here. Send some audio out for you to actually hear that. So this is them sending him off. There he goes. Look at him. They... That is incredible. Isn't that great. This thing is going. Oh yeah, <laughs> eighty thousand feet. This thing went to. Unbelievable. Oh Canada. Love it. There it goes, my brother. Those kids were awesome. Look how high it's getting. Isn't that amazing? Look at these. Look at the the pictures. Oh, they got the pictures back and just it it actually landed over, I think, 100 kilometers from where they started. They had to check constantly because they didn't want to release the balloon and have it fall on the American side of the border because then it would be very difficult to go through customs and and retrieve the cameras. Because this was not live telemetry. They had to go get the cameras back. So there's a website they could go to that estimated based on winds and everything else going on. No if way. you launched it here, where would it land up? Can you imagine trying to explain that in customs? <laughs> okay, so there was a Lego man and this weather balloon. <laughs> and they ended up finding a, a time on a weekend where it was going to land in Canada. 
And so they said, okay, let's go launch. And they went out and they launched it. It landed about 100 kilometers away. They had to wait until the next weekend to go after it. But they stuck a, a phone in it that had a GPS so they knew the exact GPS coordinates of where it landed. Brilliant. Brilliant. These guys are going to go far. They're going to go far. I think we'll hear from them again. I think we will as well. And and uh, it's one of those things where they're now ready to go to college. Um Nobody's actually uh, admitted them to college yet. So I think that's going to change. I think, that, <laughs> I think it might be a little different for them. That was that was a great story and I love the little Lego. That was the best part. It was it was fantastic. Flag. Holding his little flag up. Uh, along those same lines, because I like to have stories that link things together this week. What a pick. This comes from NASA.gov on their image gallery. This was one of the image of the days, which was the highest resolution picture of the planet Earth that anyone had ever made. And they made it based on a series of pictures that That's were beautiful. created. And I'm not even showing it at its highest resolution here. And of course, it's very difficult to see. Uh, on the podcast and the resolution that we're going here. But go out to that NASA site, uh, that, that image gallery. I'll put this URL up where you can actually see it a little bit better to that uh, image of the day is all you have to find. And that was one of the images of the day this week. Uh, this would make a great background picture for someone's desktop. I just thought that was a phenomenal picture. Incredible. And if, if you do it in the high res, the fully viewed picture of it, uh, it is remarkable to see it, um, it was uh, this was done on January 24th, and uh, I thought they put the exact size of it in here, but they they did many different swaths around the Earth to get this. So a multi, 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 multi megabit picture, even bigger than 1600 by 1200. The full size is just enormous. Here it comes. I'll just zoom up on it once. Look how big this picture is when you zoom up at the standard resolution of this quite huge. I don't even know where I am in the picture. It's so big. It takes up my whole my whole screen. I think there's uh, the edge of the United States. We'll come back over. Um, maybe not. Maybe that, I don't even know where that is. <laughs> or maybe that's the Gulf. Nope. We're way off, off base there. So it's so huge. I was down in the, the lower parts. Let's go to Florida where we happen to be. Can I even get over there? Look how big this is. And look at the detail. That's on here. You can see the clouds and everything else there. That is unbelievable. Isn't that great. Mm -hmm. They did a really great job with that. So just an interesting thing I, I came across with that. Uh, very, very, very remarkable. So uh, the that was just a great, great sight to see this week. Uh, after going through uh, the the nation's capital and seeing all the things that I saw this week, that kind of tied everything back together again for me to uh, to finish up the podcast. Well, of course, our podcast is available every week. We do this live all the time. You can, of course, if you don't catch us live, you can watch us at whatawekpodcast.com, where I also have connections to iTunes. If you wanted to subscribe in iTunes and automatically download every week's video episode, that's there. I'll shortly be adding audio episode links into iTunes as well. On our Twitter, you can follow us at whatweek, my fantastic Twitter name, out there, not what a week, but what week. And of course, you can send me messages directly at james at whatawekpodcast.com. And there you go. That's That was what a week. What a show. It was good. It was good. We had everything from cats to balloons. It was awesome. To, we covered it all. <laughs> covered it all. And fantastic souvenirs from our <laughs> capital city. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look at the other pictures now I'm that we're done. I'm a little sad I didn't get the Abe Lincoln keychain. Well, maybe next time. I'll work that out for you. Keep that in mind. I absolutely will. <laughs> we do this every week, and of course, we'll see you next time on the next episode of What a Week. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye, everybody. <laughs>